tab on the screen to like the video so that this can be pushed out in the algorithm for more women to be able to learn because this is gonna be a very informative live. This fibroids is something that a lot of women deal with, a lot of women struggle. If you have ovarian cysts, again, or endometriosis, you know, or you know, or any reproductive health issues, you're gonna to wanna to be on this live. You're gonna to wanna to, um, hear this live because here's the thing, like when we're talking about fibroids, when we talk about all these other reproductive health issues, it's the habits that you're engaging in that cause them to grow, okay? We don't necessarily think about that. We think that they just grow randomly or they just develop randomly. That's not true, right? So you're engaging in habits that create these growths that are also cause them to, to um, their symptoms to worsen, that also, you know, deteriorate eventually your body, okay? So we wanna talk, like, we wanna um, definitely address that today, all right? As you're, as you're coming in, please like, type on the screen to like the video. For those that are new, my name is Sasha. I'm a holistic woman wellness specialist. And what I do is I help women who have fibroids, who have other reproductive health issues, get to the root cause of the problem in order to solve the problem, in order to, in order to address the problem from the root. So again, that we can eliminate the issue, right? So we can shrink and develop, dissolve the fibroids, the ovarian cysts, the endometrial tissue. Like we can dissolve these things and also rebalance our hormones. That's very important. So I also work with women who um, struggle with getting pregnant, okay, who are having fertility issues as well. And I help them be able to, again, enhance their fertility health, which is very important because, you know, we live in a world where we're dealing with 25-year-olds, 35-year-olds that are literally going for IVF. So hopefully um, you guys, um, and for those that are new, hi and welcome, hi and welcome. Make sure you guys are following me as well. Today we're going to talk about, again, how what makes fibroids grow. Again, if you have any reproductive health issue, you're going to want to stay tuned because you're going to learn a lot during this live, okay? If you guys have questions, feel free to ask questions, but just make sure that you guys are tapping on the screen to like the video. Let's get the likes up if we can. Please tap on the screen so we can get more women in here, okay? Um, I don't know. Tonight is... <laughs> I'm waiting on more women to come in, but just, yes, um, yes. Thank you for typing on the screen. Yes, please type on the screen. Can you guys put a one in the chat if you guys can see and hear me perfectly? Can you guys hear me? I want to make sure of that before we get started. Um, so put a one in the chat if you guys can hear me, you guys can see me. Thank you, Trinity Tips, for liking the video. Thank you, Cobra, for liking the video. Let's get some more likes in here. Let's get the likes up to like 100 at least. Um, because this is, again, it's going to be a very informative live. Put a one in the chat if y'all can see and hear me. <laughs> I want to, uh, you know, go on with the live, but I want to make sure before that you guys can hear me and see me, okay? Um, so please put a one in the chat. All you have to do is, ladies, all you have to do is put a one in the chat so that we can continue going on, <laughs> okay? So, but thank you so much for liking the video. I'm just waiting on y'all to confirm that you guys can see and hear me perfectly. Okay, Itosha, okay, I see, okay, finally, sheesh, thank you, Joanne. I don't know if there's a lag or what's going on, but I'm like, just put a one in the chat. Oh, thank you for confirming that you guys can see and hear me. I appreciate you so much. Let's get the likes up to, to, um, to 200, ladies. Okay, so what makes five boys grow? If you're here, if you have five boys, if you have endometriosis, ovarian cysts, you're in the right place. Make sure you're following me, okay? Also, make sure you join my email list as well. Um, this is what I do, I help women Get rid of these issues naturally, okay? I'm a holistic womb specialist, okay? So if you're here for holistic healing, for holistic health, you're in the right place, okay? So when it comes to fibroids, right, we're gonna talk about how hormonal imbalances cause fibroids to grow, and a lot of women, if not more, I was, at this point, is most women are dealing with hormonal imbalances. A lot of them don't even realize it, right? I did a video um, a couple weeks ago on if you have a cycle, a menstrual cycle that lasts more than four days, that is a red flag. That is a clear hormonal imbalance. And women went crazy in the comments. It's still up. It went viral. Women are like, st people are still commenting on that video from like two weeks ago. And like in disbelief, like that you're not supposed to bleed for a whole week. You're not supposed to bleed for a whole month. People don't, I don't understand why people, women don't understand that. But your body shows you signs when your hormones are out of balance. Our body shows us signs from, you know, our menstrual cycle, right, to our digestive health, right, to our blood sugar levels, to so many to even how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis, to how you sleep, right, to, you know, if you're feeling fatigued, to your energy levels. Your body shows you signs of, of you know, um, the state that it's in every single day, but a lot of us ignore the signs or we suppress the signs with things like painkillers, medications, right? So that's what's going on right now. So, or, you know, even people suppress their, their own cycle with, you know, um, birth control. That's another thing as well. So make sure we're liking the video. Like the video, ladies. 
Let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes up. All I have to do is tap on the screen to like the video. But I want to say this: when it comes to a whole list, I mean, um, hormonal imbalance, you're dealing with the hormonal imbalance if you have a cycle that lasts. If you have cramps. If you have breast tenderness, right? If you feel nauseated during your cycle, these are not normal. And for too long, we've normalized these things. And a lot of women are com totally confused about their body and how it's supposed to work because they think that things like pain is normal, right? That's, it's never normal. They don't understand this is inflammation in the body, right? This is an imbalance in the body. So this is this begins to happen for years. And then before you know it, boom, you've been diagnosed with a fibroid. But what you didn't understand is that your body was showing you signs for years. And put a one in the chat if, you, if you're understanding what I'm saying. Everybody's quiet today. What's going on tonight? It's Monday night. It's the middle of uh, April. What is going on? Y'all are too quiet today, okay? Um, make sure you guys are liking the video as well. Thank you, Carolina Girl Trendy Tips. I appreciate you. Okay, Carolina Girl. Okay, one person understands. Okay, so um, when it comes to fight, okay, two. Okay, thank you, Latasha. Thank you, ladies, so much. Let's get the likes up, please. Tap, tap on the screen because we want to get more women in here. Thank you, Ma Mahogany, for liking the video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just tap on the screen. Let's like the video. Let's get it up to at least a thousand. Let's run it up so we can get more women in here so the algorithm can push it into out to more women, okay? So hormonal imbalance, right? Your body has been showing you signs. Your body has been showing you signs for years that you're dealing with hormonal imbalance, right? That it's out of balance. But again, we ignore it. And all, all of a sudden, you've been diagnosed with fibroids. All of a sudden, you start getting these symptoms. All of a sudden, you start heavily bleeding, right? All of a sudden, your cycles start getting worse. And we, again, we attribute that to age. It's not age. Or maybe perimenop perimenopause. So that's the thing that everybody's talking about. 10, 15 years ago, nobody was talking about that. But now, that's, been, that's, that's the new propaganda, right? To uh, normalize sickness, pretty much. To normalize hormonal imbalance, which is horrible. Because, again, because they're, na they're giving these things names, right? Women are not understanding this is an imbalance that's going on in my body. You don't have to be peri perimenopausal. So you don't have to experience symptoms. Don't peri you don't have to experience these symptoms. That's the imbalance going on in the body, right? So we have to stop normalizing sickness and going along with doctors that normalize sickness, right? You're not supposed to feel pain during your cycle. Your body, our body shows us signs, but we don't listen. We will numb ourselves, right? Suppress it and not listen to our body and then listen to these random tests but your body was showing you signs you don't want to listen to your body but you listen to a test that's not even you don't even under, know whether it's accurate or not so that's that's a whole other conversation so understanding the signs when your hormones are out of balance that's why i'm do i'm doing this um this a master excuse me this that's a master class workshop coming up next week because i've done so many master classes but i'm doing a two-day workshop next week and that's why i'm doing it on estrogen uh, excuse me estrogen dominance Right, hormone imbalance workshop, two day workshop. So, in case you guys are interested, because when we have to number one understand what a hormonal imbalance is and how to address it in the body, that's so important. Because every day, like it should not be most of the population of women dealing with heavy bleeding, dealing with the, you know crazy menstrual cycles, dealing with cysts, dealing with fibroids. This this should not be that. This is all from estrogen dominance. If we can really combat this science earlier, we can get ahead of it, right? Hey, Nicolette. Hi. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing the live. Uh, Joanne, thank you uh, for being here, ladies. Yes. Share the live if you can with somebody that needs to hear this. Continue liking the live. Let's get the likes up to a thousand. We're not at a thousand yet. Come on, ladies. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get to a thousand. Let's get to a thousand. Um, all you have to do is tap on the screen to like the video. That's all. You, literally all you have to do. Okay. It's free, you guys. It's free. Okay. So thank you, Nicolette, for liking the live. But yes, when it comes to um, five boys, right, when it comes to these, this stems from estrogen dominance. A lot of women don't even understand or know what estrogen dominance is, which is very sad because most women are estrogen dominant, right? So if you understand what this is, you understand a lot of times that you've been going through this since, you know, teen, you've been, you got your first cycle. Because if you had your fi first cycle and you were in so much pain and it was horrible, right? We're not supposed to deal with, we're not supposed to, you're not supposed to ever experience that, but especially not as a teenager, right? So this has been normalized for even little girls are dealing with this because we're passing down this weak, this weak lymphatic system, this estrogen dominance to our daughters even, right? And you see that even men also too. How many men do you see with breasts now? How many men do you see with, with um, receding hairline, right? Even the men are being pumped with estrogen, right? So it's, it's, it's actually an epidemic. And too much, as women, yes, we're supposed to have estrogen. estrogen. Everybody's supposed to have estrogen, but not an excess amount of it because... What happens is it, and your body cannot detox the, um, your body's supposed to detox excess estrogens that disrupt the body's flow. But the body can't do that if it's clogged up. The body can't do that if it's out of balance. The body can't do that if it's unhealthy, okay? 
So that's why I'm doing this masterclass. I don't know if you guys are on my email list or some of you guys, baby. But if you're not on my email list, first of all, make sure you get on my email list because I do a whole training on um, giving information about um, estrogen dominance. But the masterclass, excuse me, the workshop, I'm sorry, next week is going to be amazing because you guys have me in real time and you guys can ask questions and you, you guys are going to learn how do we address this? How do we address estrogen dominance? This is a, something that's serious that can lead to cancer, you know, if we, we don't get ahead of it for some women, right? Breast cancer is caused by estrogen dominance. So is ovarian cancer, so is cervical cancer. These cancers are caused by estrogen dominance. So that's why it's so important for you to reverse this, okay? So that's why I'm doing a message. So if you're interested in the masterclass, click the link in my bio, it's only $44. It's a two day masterclass, it will be on Zoom, okay? So after, I think by Friday, we're gonna increase the price because again, I'm gonna be giving a lot of value in this masterclass. If you've ever been to workshop if you ever miss any of my workshops or master classes you know that i give a lot a lot of value and people will, and we're also if you're not able to make it we have replays for everybody that signs up so you'll be having access to the replay so i have before i even announced it i just put it up last night two people already grabbed it before i even announced came out to announce it so i'm so excited it's only 44 dollars, but before friday okay it's gonna go up on friday after friday i'm sorry it'll go up after friday hey Brittany. Hey, 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 I hope to see you at the mat at the workshop. It's a two-day workshop. Next week, it's going to be on Wednesday, Thursday, okay, 6 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. Now, if you're not able to make it in real time and you sign up, you'll get the replays. Just to let you guys know, okay? So, what makes fibroids grow? If you're dealing with hormonal imbalance, if you're dealing with these and you don't, again, reverse this, you don't rebalance your hormones, you don't detoxify your hormones, this is what's going to cause, again, your fibroids to grow and get worse, okay? So if you're watching this and you have fibroids, you've got to address the hormonal imbalance, right? So very, very important. That's one of the things you have to address for sure. Get your hormones in balance, okay? So yes, thank you guys. Let's, we finally got to 1K likes. Can we get to 2K or 1.5? <laughs> but yeah, so that's very important. Now let's get to the food. That's the part a lot of people struggle with. That's the part I get the most questions about. Sometimes people think, again, it's just diet. It's not only diet, right? But I want to address the food. If you're eating a lot of processed foods, then this, oh my gosh, this again will worsen fibroid growth. When I'm telling this is bad. You got to stop eating the processed foods, ladies. Like all the processed foods that we eat, like for example, um, the meat, right? The dairy. And I say, if you have fibroids, let me be honest with you, you really should not be eating anything from that has a mother. Honestly, now I'm not telling you you have to go vegan, but I am telling you for a time period, if you're trying to get rid of your fibroids naturally, you have to really, you know, um, you, you do have to eat a healing diet. We cannot, we're already dealing with a backed up, backed up digestive system when we have fibroids, right? We're already, um, let's get the likes up, let's get the likes up. Um, when we have fibroids, we're already dealing with a backed up digestive system. So then now you're putting things down to things in your body to slow down your digestive, digestive system, excuse me, even more. That's the, huge, that's the issue. That is the issue, okay? So it's very important that you understand that. Like, we have to eat in a way that's going to help us heal our hormones, not create, cause us to develop more tumors or grow these tumors, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. If you are watching this and you have five boys, you have to really look at your diet. So put a one in the chat if you feel like you could do better with your diet. Okay, this is no judgment zone. Put a one in the chat if you feel like your diet could be better. You're not getting enough nutrients and you, you know, your diet could be a lot better. Put a one in the chat, okay? Because if you're dealing with fibroids and you have a diet that is, okay, we have, okay, I see, I see a one person. So out of 30 people, only one person, everybody else has a, has a perfect diet. All 29 of y'all have a perfect diet, okay? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> or all 30 something of you guys, I was eating way too much there, yes. Hey, Sarah. Hey. Hey. So nice to see you. Okay, 903. Thank you guys for your honesty. Yes, put a one in the chat. If you know you can do better with your diet. If you got five boys, you like, wait a minute. Or even any reproductive health issue. And you know, listen, I know my diet is not where it's supposed to be. Okay? If that's you, put a one in the chat because I want us, okay. So that, I want you guys to be aware. Like, I want you guys to honestly do some self-analysis okay and ask yourself why is my diet not where it's supposed to be right do is it because i have too much temptation around me is it because my kitchen is like filled with junk you know um sodas and chips and things that i don't i don't need to be eating right so we're 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 moving towards the summertime now right 
So you're supposed to eat lighter foods anyway. Lots of, lots of fruit. You're always supposed to eat lots of fruit, but definitely moving towards the summertime, right? So here's the thing. We have to start changing our diet. We have to start eating. And if you guys have questions, let me know, because I don't see no questions. This is the first time I've not seen any questions, okay? <laughs> but when we talk about diet, right, you're not supposed to be eating dairy. Dairy literally causes inflammation. It causes your body to be filled with mucus. It causes, you know, it creates tumors and causes tumors to grow. That's the worst thing you can eat when you have uh, uh, fibroids or any any health issue. It's really nobody's supposed to be eating dairy, not even children, but that's another, another conversation, right? So if you um, are eating dairy or eating foods that have dairy, you may not be drinking cow's milk, but you're probably eating something more than likely that has dairy. And if you're not checking you know, your ingredients, then you're, you're probably eating a lot of dairy. If you don't check ingredients, uh, anytime you eat something packaged, you're eating a lot of dairy because dairy is literally in almost everything. When you start checking, you'll know. And I know, when you start checking your ingredients, you'll understand, wait a minute, dairy, soy, these things are nearly everything. Let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes up. Uh, tap on the screen. Let's get the likes up, ladies. The way you explain dairy in your program. Pro oh, you mean the course completely changed the way I view it. Oh, Sarah got the 12 steps on how to shrink your uh, fibroids course. Full bundle course. Shout out to Sarah. And also, Sarah also, too, signed up for the workshop that I'm having next week. So shout out to Sarah. Does this apply to uh, atopic pregnancies? Yes. Absolutely. Thank you, 903. It does. It does. Because we're dealing with... um. The tubes, absolutely. Um, can you eat any type of breads? You don't want to do bread. I'm going to be honest with you, 100%. You don't want to do bread when you have fibroids. You know why? Because you're dealing with... Now, I'm not say, say, saying you can never eat bread, no. But we, don't, we really... If you do eat it seldomly, like I'm talking about like once a month, because you're dealing with, a again, a digestive system that's backed up. Your digestive system is backed up when you have fibroids, right? We have to get our liver. These things are compromised, right? So, again, we have to start detoxifying some of that stuff. And people say they want to go into detox. And I'm like, how about you get your body to the point where it's detoxifying itself every single day? That's key right there. Instead of doing a detox and going right back to your bad diet afterwards like most people do, how, get your body to the point where it's detoxifying itself every day. That's, your body's supposed to detoxify every day. Be detox, you're supposed to be detoxing all the time. Right, especially especially now with all these environmental toxins that we got, all these toxins in these product, these toxins and these products and everything, your body is supposed to be detoxing itself every day. If you're not, something's wrong. Something is wrong. So then we have to make adjustments. You're you're not getting enough hydration. Maybe it's stress, right? Because stress can too stop the, the digestion process as well. When your cortisol levels are up, all types of bread. What about bread made mainly? You could do that sometimes, Sarah, but you don't want to do that too much. You're welcome, Peppos. I started this month eating a lot better. Good. I've been taking raspberry. Okay, good, 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 good. Now, it does take more than diet to get rid of fibroids, Letitia, Latasha. Because people will come, people will, I'm, I'm just letting you know because people will say, oh, well, I'm, I've been, my diet has been perfect and I still have fibroids. It takes more than diet. It's not just diet. That's just one component. <laughs> that's just one component. But I'm happy that you're, but it's a, it is a very important component. So that's good that your diet has been a lot better. So that's the keep up the great work. That's amazing. But see, um, seeded bread is better. Now, white bread should, shouldn't even be on the table. It should be off limits. White bread is so toxic. That shouldn't even be this, like white rice, anything white flour. That is done. Like say goodbye to that forever. Just say goodbye to it. It's, it's any type of gluten. Gluten literally acts as glue in the body. And some of you guys have been eating a lifetime like enough gluten to last a lifetime, enough of these horrible processed foods to last a lifetime. You guys are gonna hang it up on this next season in your life. Some of you guys have to have to hang up these disgusting foods that you've been doing that taste good that you've been doing for years, right? But they literally have got you in the position that you're in right now. You gotta hang it up. You gotta hang up the bacon. You gotta hang up the white flour. You gotta hang up the, the, the processed trash, the french fry, all that crap, the candies, whatever y'all be eating these days, hang it up, hang it up. Okay, you guys, and this is what I did to myself. I said, I had a, years ago, I had a, like, I really, like, you know what? I had to come to Jesus moment. I said, I've been eating this trash food for all my life, okay, for 30 something years, okay? It's something, well, at this point, that point, it was 20 something years, right? It's time to hang it up. I've been eating these foods for 20, so it's time to hang it up. I haven't, dark chocolate, no, no. Don't do, because it has caffeine, tofu, no, 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 no. That's soy, no soy, nothing with soy, okay? Nothing with soy. Um, 
if you want to make your own, yeah, hang it up. If you want to make your own chocolate, that's fine. Now, let me talk real, real quick about before we get into the rest of what makes Five Boys grow. Cause food, I had to spend some time with food because food is a lot, right? Real quick about the master class. We have a master class next week. Okay, I keep saying master class. Sorry, workshop. Sorry, it's a two day workshop next week, right? It's a two day workshop. Estro dominance hormonal balance workshop two days okay so this is for women that have fibroids this is for women that have heavy bleeding this is for women who have perimenopause symptoms right i say that because it's they literally develop something that's in a whole other conversation but this is for women that have perimenopausal symptoms right this is for women i'll be there yes angel angel you was number one person to get it so shout out to angel yes <laughs> i was like oh my god angel before i even announced that I just put it on the site boom angel got it i love that so you want to be here because your estrogen dominant that means if you have fibroids you have these reproductive health issues i keep talking about estrogen dominance because these are things that cause cancer these are things that cause cervical cancer look we just had a creator i keep saying this this is a youtuber jessica petway who literally passed away right due to due to cervical cancer but that's from estrogen dominance it started from as heavy bleeding okay so if you have a cycle that lasts more than four days if you have a heavy cycle you need to be there in that master class if you have fibroids uh, um endometriosis any variances atopic pregnancies infertility i have a long list we go on the site i have a long list of all the women that need to be there. there's a long list you know anemia you need to be there i'm so serious about this i have to do this listen i love that energy I'm angel i love that energy i have to be there for myself and for my family listen we have to do this because do we want we're, we're it's not it's, it's one thing that, uh, of us suffering but do we want our children to suffer too because you haven't i guarantee you if you have children right and they haven't reached the point where they're having periods yet they're gonna have if you have painful periods you didn't do anything about it you don't have the same thing my clients that have painful periods and they have teenage daughters their daughters go through the same thing. So as they're healing, they're healing their daughters too. Their daughters are going through the same thing. So we, we, we talk about we love our children so much, but do we want them suffering when they don't have to? It's just because we don't want to do the work. It's only $44. There's no excuse why nobody should be there. That's why I do these, I do workshops. I do master classes. So people that, again, can maybe can't afford the courses can come to learn. And everybody knows I always over deliver on them. So if you're not there... I, you know, the price will go up on uh, after Friday. My mom had it, you see, and didn't tell me until two years ago. Ooh, you see? And you guys know a lot of elders keep, you know, the older generation sometimes keeps certain things a secret, which they shouldn't because being open about this helps the next generation. So how long is the class? It's two days. It's going to be, I don't know the length of time, but it's going to be at least a probably hour and 30 minutes, but I don't know the exact length of time, Brittany, but Brittany... You get the re if you miss have to miss some you get the replays. Everybody that registers will get replays of the class, so don't worry about that. Okay, we're gonna go on as long as we go on. Okay, I'm gonna answer questions. I make sure everybody we, there's clarity, enough time for there to be clarity. <laughs> okay, so um, a pebble said I'll be there. Okay, pebbles, I can. I hope I, I'm excited that you're gonna be there. Make sure you click the link in my bio to to um, register. So grab your seat early so you don't forget okay everybody grab your seat early so you don't forget okay the link is in my bio but yeah let's talk about what grows fibers okay now we're moving on to stressful relationships Whew. stressful and i talk about this all the time because it's really a thing that a lot of women are is a lot of women are going through stressful relationships yes relationships do take work well work right work and there is stress involved in that but it shouldn't be to the point where you're crying almost every day, you know, um, you're dealing with emotional pain every day, you know, or every other day, or even once a week. Like, it shouldn't be to the point where you're always in pain. You're always fighting. So you guys know the difference between a regular relationship issues to toxic. We should know at this point. We're all grown here, right? So if you're dealing with, if you're involved with toxic men or involved in toxic relationships, or maybe you're the toxic one, I don't know, Okay listen this again will i don't this probably is number one on the list this is one of the number one things on the list if you're going through st stress and trauma every day you're in a situation where your cortisone levels your body's in fight or flight mode your, your cortisone levels are always up that's it your your health is done if you don't get yourself out of that situation your health is done i'm not telling you what to do but i am saying that you have to make some changes in order to better the situation or whatever right because here's the thing your body cannot be in that state every day 
You're health, listen, this is how we grow huge fibroids and women that's in stressful situations grow the biggest fibroids. I'll tell you that right now. The ones that have the biggest fibroids, they're dealing with, thank you for liking me. Let's get the likes up. These li Let's get the likes up. The likes today are, are struggling. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. The likes are struggling today. Thank you, Pebbles, for liking the video. Usually we be at 5K likes by now. I don't know what's going on today. Okay, so, but anyway, stressful relationships. Or just stress in general. It could be stress from work. It could be stress from a family member. It could be just, you know, um, it could be just stress that you can't really control. But here's the thing. Your body is, we all deal with everyday stresses, right? Little stressors here and there, right? That's normal. Even stress, we, sometimes we can't really avoid it. But when it comes to you as a grown person, if you were at a job that's stressing you out, that's something you, you can control. If you were a man that's stressing you out, that's something you can control, Okay. There's certain situations that you can control, okay? So the relationship and the job, these are the two biggest ones. And also I will say like things like divorces too, and things like that, if you're in a custody battle, things like that are very stressful as well, like right? those type of things, right? So that if we're dealing with that, we have to, you know, really take time to manage our stress levels properly, Wusa, breathe, breath work is important. I do it daily, I don't play. I wake up to breath work and I immediately feel lighter. Immediately, okay? I also listen to binary beats as I'm going to bed, right? Because I don't play when it comes to my, me my mental health. My I don't play, I have to be in a sound mind all the time, right? Because of what I'm doing, because of what I do for a living, but also too, for my health, my own health too, right? And I encourage my clients to do the same. Do what you have to do. Some people, you know, when it comes to their, um, their stress levels, you know, working out is really, you know, helps them with that, right? Yeah, you, everybody should work out. But if you're working out, as your, you know that you working out is something that helps lower your stress, do it. I love being me is being in the sun, taking a jog, taking a walk. I did that today. And that's another thing, too. You, um, listen to what before you go to bed. Binary beats of Brittany. Um, binary beats. If you message, send me an email, I can send you some um, links that I love, okay? It calms my mind, okay? I love going to sleep. I don't like to go to sleep angry. Or with thinking about my long to-do list. I like to go to sleep with a sound mind, okay? I can't, you know. Um, so whatever I'm going through, I cannot go go with it as I'm going to the, you know, the astral realm or whatever you call when you go to sleep, okay? But anyway, here's the thing. Very, very important. It's very, very... Hey, Penny. Hey. <laughs> hey, Penny. We have a um, workshop coming up next week. Astro Dominance Hormonal Balance Workshop, Okay. Two-day workshop next week on the 24th and 25th, Wednesday and Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you're there. It's only $44. Now it's going to go up on after Friday, okay? Make sure you're there. Make sure you click the link on my bio register. I want to see you there, okay? And come with your questions. And I know you got lots of questions, but I love it. I love it. There's also fiber-specific healing sounds. Ooh, you're right about that, Sarah. There is. There is fiber-specific healing sounds and, like, womb healing sounds. You guys can do meditations to that. Some of you guys that like to pray, you guys can pray to that, you know, or whatever you do as for spirituality or just sit there and be calm and just take a deep breath. See, who knows? Like, whatever you like to do. I love listening to healing sounds. Like, I love that. It calms my mind. Sometimes when I'm feeling anxious, I'm a human being, sometimes there's some certain things where you feel anxious too. And I, I'm like, let me put on my favorite <laughs> binary beats for anxiety, okay? Boom. Take a deep breath. I feel instantly within minutes, I feel better. Don't let yourself be in that state for a long time. We all are human beings. We get sad. We feel emotions, but a lot of you guys are holding on to emotions. You're supposed to let emotions move through you, not hold on to them, right? Especially the well, bad emotions move through you, right? But we hold on. We let the, the good ones move through us, and we hold on to the bad ones. No, it's supposed to be actually the other, the other way around, right, when you really think about it. So hopefully that makes sense. We, we as human beings, we hold on. To, to bad emotions and let the good ones move through us. Like, you know, for example, if somebody gave you $1,000, right, today, um, by, in a couple, I would say by day three, four after that, you will not even, like, you won't even be thinking about it anymore. You'll be happy, real happy for the first two, three days, but after that, you, that'll move through you. But if somebody, for example, took, God forbid this ever happens, took $1,000 from you, that feeling of loss will be in your heart probably for the next, year you'll be thinking about that and, and dwelling on it for like the next year that's how we are as human beings we have to really catch ourselves you get what i'm saying hopefully that makes sense i know that, that I, I took away left but i'm just saying i'm giving you an example like we hold on to bad emotions and when it comes to the good ones we let it 
That's me. Exact. Listen, it's not only you, E. It's not only you. We all as human beings naturally do it. So we have to really get into our minds to control it and and actually flip it, right? Because when bad things happen, I like, okay, you know what? We're going to process it. We're going to cry. We have to cry. Yell. We have to yell. But let that stuff move through. You don't hold on to it, right? And when good things happen, hold on to it. Like how I do, to, I, have a, I have a gratitude journey, right? I write down things daily that I'm grateful for. I'm like, look at all these things I'm grateful for. Like, all these things that are happening, right? Why am I dwelling on stuff that don't even matter? Like, stuff from the past. Like, you guys have to stop dwelling on that stuff, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So, um, Sasha, thank you for creating a safe space. Yes, for um, where we can get re real information on how to heal. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. I appreciate you guys for being here. I appreciate you guys for supporting. I appreciate you guys for liking the live, sharing the videos with others that need to see it. If you know anybody has has five boys or other things, share this with them. What about castor oil? What about it? Like, castor oil is not going to get rid of five boys. Now, can we feel better with castor oil? Maybe your parents will get better. Yes, everybody has a... a different reactions. Some people, castor oil, I've had people say, listen, castor oil made me bleed more. So it just depends on the person. To me, you still have to do the work. So it's up to you. If you like it, try it, right? If you, just make sure it's organic castor oil, okay? I am four months postpartum and it's hard to stay mentally strong. Oh, I know, I know. But don't worry, Angel, during the workshop also too, when you're healing your body, when you're rebalancing your hormones, that does help because your hormones are all over the place right now, right? So I totally understand. But guess what? As we are healing the body, as we re rebalance the hormones, that will also be helpful for you to be more in a sound mind and be more positive, okay? So don't worry about that. When your hormones are balanced, listen, you feel happier. You feel, you, just, you have more energy, right? You just, you sleep better. So you got this. You got this. I'm excited for you joining the, um, the workshop for sure. That's so true. I've been missing my grandmother. Oh, I'm crying all day. I'm so sorry, Brittany. Yes, I'm so sorry. You know, let it, let it out. Let the tears out. It's okay. It's okay. Because when we experience loss, it's okay for us to, to grieve and, you know, cry. But also think about the good things, too. I lost my grandmother, too, so I totally understand. That's my only grandparent that I knew. The rest of them passed away before I was even born. So that was very painful for me. But I think about the good times, too, that I had with her as well. Um, thank you for doing these free lives. You're welcome. You're welcome. L let ish go. There we go. So you can grow. Oh, I love that. Yes, Sarah. Let it go so you can grow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let it let it go. Like we we hang on to stuff that we don't have to be hanging on to a lot, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about it. Now, I talked about stress and stressful relationships. Birth control. You guys should know that by now. If anybody's watching this, you're on birth control. Take it out. If you're on birth control, uh, what they're doing the IUDs now. So take it out. Stop taking it. If you're on a pill, stop taking it. This is going to worsen your fibroid growth, worsen your health. You're feeding your body with toxins, synthetic hormones every single day. Okay. Can you make a video on the impact of a bad husband on getting fibroids? Ooh, so I can show my dad. That's a good video. <laughs> Thank you, Han. On the if let me write, let me write that down. A bad husband on getting fibroids. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Or maybe I'll say bad relationship or bad marriage. I think that's a really good video. What you guys think? Tell me, would you guys like to see that on getting fibroids? That's true. A lot of women have gotten fibroids due to like bad husbands or bad relationships. That is very true. Very, very true. We want, I talked about fibroids and relationships, like, I think about a week ago, but we'll talk about it again. We'll talk about it again. My mom has fibroids. Okay. Okay, so, okay, I definitely will make it. Okay, your mom has five boys. Okay, yeah, that's, a, that's another thing. Five boys literally come from, you know, um, one, of the, one of the things that a lot of women that have five boys that, that have in common is like, um, they're dealing with, they're nursing a hurt from a, pre, a partner, a current partner or a previous partner, right? So even the woman that can't get, get away, like can't get, that's, that can't get over her ex, that's the same as, as, that's the same as you being in a toxic relationship because, you're having this emotional attachment with the ex that's already y'all already broke up. He was toxic. He, you know, he went his own way. You went your own way, but you still your mind is still there. That's again too. That's the same as being in a relationship with him, right? That's gonna give your body. That's the same. Like if you're dwelling on this ex that's that's gone instead of moving on with your life mentally. And my dad isn't the best husband. Oh gosh, woo. Yeah, um, that's sad. I, I yeah, oof. Yeah, sometimes parents are good parents, but not the best. Yeah. I, 
that's horrible. Hopefully your mom gathers the strength to, to, to leave or your dad changes. Either one. I don't know. Uh, I stopped. I tried stopping the progesterone, but the excessive bleeding started again. Thank you for letting me know. So I'm scared to stop again. So that's okay. So um, I know I'm saying your name wrong. Strum chords. Listen, you have to then in that case, you want to you have to make sure that you are on point with what they're what you're doing right so you have want to wean yourself off of it right so since you're on progesterone wean yourself off of it so that means that we have to do you have the 12 design of strength fibroids full bundle course that means if you have the course you have to be literally be killing and you, everything on the course you have to start doing it right and then take it a couple weeks to see wean yourself off of it slowly you don't have to do it all at once because some women again that's why i help clients do that as well wean themselves off of um Birth control. I've actually, I have helped a client do that before who was bleeding for two and a half years. Okay. We got her off on the fourth week and I'm helping the client do it now. That just started. Wean her stuff. And then again, as we're healing her body and also getting rid of her fibroids, she's a in my detoxify your wound program. She's working with me for four months. Okay. Um, I've, I've been bleeding for four weeks now. You're in, oh gosh, you're in the, definitely in the right place. Listen, ladies that, that have birth control that are dealing with um, bleeding, you need to be in my estro dominance. Um, two day workshop, okay. Two day hormonal balance workshop. You need to be there. It's next week on the 24th. It's gonna be via Zoom next week on the 24th. Is 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 internet? I mean, it's global. So anybody, in, in, as long as you have access to Zoom, you can be there, right? It's um on tw the 24th and the 25th, Wednesday, and Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You need to be there, okay? You're dealing with estrogen dominance. You need to be there. That's gonna be the link is in my bio. It's only forty four dollars. Okay, the price will go up after Friday, but cl click the link to, to, um, to register and also join my email list as well. But when you, if you, when you register, you're already on the email list anyway, but that's a fine. But you need to be there. You need to be there. We cannot continue because you're dealing with estrogen dominance. You're dealing with, and you need to have to understand number one, exact fully what it is and also to how to address it. That's very important because we don't want these things can lead to bigger issues in the future. Okay, we want to get rid of them now. Okay, very a lot of women are dealing with estrogen dominance, and it's scary because it's getting worse and worse. And young girls are dealing with it too. You shouldn't. We're having girls start their periods eight, nine. That's that was a normal fifty years ago, or even twenty five years ago. That was not normal. Now that's the norm, right? Because of the estrogen dominance. That's that early period. We're not supposed. Nobody's supposed to start their period at no eight or nine. That I mean, as a child. That's a child, and the ages are gonna get lower until we do something, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. I've been doing some research, what's your thoughts on, about why every every live I get asked about one or two things, wild yam cream or a castor oil. My, my, my thing is, just do the work on getting rid of the fibroids. Forget, I mean, you can if you want to. If you feel inclined to do it, go ahead, but there's so many gimmicks online Right there, there's probably somebody online saying that you could stand, you could do a handstand and get rid of your fibroids. Right, the thing is, do the work. You cannot get away from the lifestyle, the the habits, and the diet habits. Right, the mindset. You can't get away from that. So I just focus on that. All this other stuff. If you want to do that, that's fine. But focus on the important stuff, the foundation. Okay, if that makes sense. I did for over six months, and now I'm twenty. I'm a, I'm in a 21 day cycle. I went vegan, which helped. Okay, good. I'm 36 and started at nine. Oh, wow. A lot of women that have fibroids started their cycle early, before the age. And before the age, honestly, before you're a teenager, that's early. I started early too, okay? Before teenage, that's really early. Because do some research on when people started their cycle back then, before processed food, before all these environmental toxins, before all this crap that we have now, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. I started at eight. Wow. I remember being in the principal's office on the floor, crying in pain. Woo! Woo, Angel. That was me, but I was that was me at 16. That was me at 16, crying in pain. I was always in the nurse's office every month. She knew me. I had to lay on the bed and put the heating pad on because they couldn't give me like, you know, painkillers every single month. No kid should have to deal with that. No kid should have to deal with that. And if the mothers get themselves together, they'll know what to do for their daughters. No kid should have to deal with that. That's what no woman should have to deal with that. But that's talk about a kid. Kids, I mean, come on now. We gotta do better. We have to do better. Now, we can say that our mothers didn't know, but we can't say we don't know. We can't say that at this point. We cannot say that. We can't say that, okay? Yes, I did. I got the course from her and made graduate changes. Yes, okay. So, um, 
what was I gonna say? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, ladies, and if you weren't if you weren't able to get Brittany got the How to Eliminate Heavy Bleeding course. If you guys weren't able to get that too, I did take that off the site. Now that's included in all the courses, but that's off the site because I kept saying I was gonna take that off. However, we got the master class. Okay, we had the the workshop, the workshop, the two day workshop next week. Okay, estrogen dominance. Okay, two day hormonal balance workshop. You need to be there. You need to be there. This is important, right? This literally at this point, it may be even life or death. That for some people, it is that at that point, it's at that point. Okay, because if these are issues again, this hormonal balance is this hormone imbalance that most women have leads to for some women breast cancer, uterine cancer, cervical cancer, endometrial cancer, right? Ovarian cancer. These are common now. I'm sure everybody knows somebody that's young with breast cancer or cervical cancer or ovarian cancer. My aunt died of it at the age of 32. Like, this is serious. And we think, listen, these cancers are not just, oh, if they don't run in your family, you're not going to get them. No. There's women getting them and they don't run. Like, you can get breast cancer without it running in your family. Do the research. These are cancers you can get without it running in your family. Without cancer running in your family. Life is different than it was back then. You can't look at the answers. You can't look at your ancestors and just because they don't have it, you think you're not going to get it. That's not true. Life is different right now. They didn't deal with all this processed food. They didn't deal with all this stress, they did all this anxiety. They weren't on all this anxiety medication. They weren't dealing with, they didn't have high blood pressure in the thir at 30. There is, life is different now. Life is different, okay? I feel like I'm at the point, so I really appreciate this because the doctors haven't shared any of this with us. Absolutely, they have not. That was me too, they didn't share this, none of this with me. I have to research all this stuff, so. I learned a lot from you. No one in my family knew what to do. Wow. Thank you, Penny. I, I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you saying Let me screenshot it. I appreciate you saying that, though. I'm happy that you learned a lot. And um, that's why I do these lives. Because, again, we're not getting information from the doctors. We're, not, we're just not. We're not getting real. We're just getting surface level. Oh, you have fibroids because uh, you're black. That Doctors have told people that because you're black. Or because uh, you, your mom has it. No, we got to stop it with these surface level answers. We need real answers, okay? The work and lifestyle to get rid of them is so much work. Kimbo, it's not. Okay, I want you to flip your perspective. What's more work? You ch making changes to better your health and your lifestyle and your lineage, or are you sticking to your bad habits and having bad health for the rest of your life, worse health as time goes on? Which one is more work? To keep your problem and for it to get worse or for you to make changes and do the hard part now. It may be hard for a couple couple months, but once you get the swing of things, it's because a part of you, right? Which one is harder, Kimbo? Which one is harder? All the doctors want to do surgery. Of course, they they of course. That's what they do. Surgery, birth control, or medications. They have nothing else to offer. Nothing. Nothing. Okay? We might have to do a part two to this video. <laughs> um, they have nothing else to offer at all. Nothing. Okay? Yes, I can't accept those answers. I need the solution. Absolutely. That's me. Like, I I don't like problems without solutions. I need a solution. I need a solution. That's me. I'm, I'm going to find a solution. There's a solution to every single problem in this fucking world. Excuse me. Oof. My, I don't want to curse on life. Every problem in this world, there's a solution for. Okay? There's a solution for. Every single one. Hey, Ursula, how are you? Ursula, we have a... <laughs> you heard me slip, Okay? That was a slip. I'm sorry about that. But because uh, I know that, you know, people from different religions and things like that, different parts of the world watch this live. So I don't want to <laughs> curse. I go for the ultrasound on May 3rd. Okay, good. But Penny, are you doing the work right now? Are you doing the work? Okay. Because from now to May 30th, you, it could be, you could make a huge difference between now and May 30th if you go in and do the work. You can make some, you can make a difference for sure. Um, but yes, Ursula, we have a workshop coming up next week. Okay, called Estro Dominance Two Day Hormonal Balance Workshop. Hope to see you there. Yes, okay, good, good, Penny, good, good, good. I love to hear that. Okay, good. Okay, we need solutions. We're tired of, oh, you have fibroids because you're black. Oh, you have fibroids because it's genetic. We're t that's old. If a doctor tells you that, just walk out of the doctor's office. Just get a new doctor because this doctor, we cannot deal with, we cannot settle for these stupid answers anymore. It's 2024, okay? It's 20, you have an update. Okay, what's the update? What's the update? Okay, I'm all excited. What's the update? <laughs> but yeah, so 
Yes, I was told I, it was because I, it's genetic. Yeah, that's BS. Can we be more predisposed to certain things? Yes, because these are genetic. But however, genetics is like, and somebody described it perfectly. It's like putting in a light bulb, right? But not turning it on, but just putting the light bulb in the socket or whatever, right? Now, we're the ones that flip the switch for it to actually occur in the body. Because guess what? High blood pressure is genetic too. I got it on both sides of my family. And I, my blood pressure ain't high. My blood pressure is perfect, okay? Now, has it, was it high in the past? Yes, it was. Okay, if you see my before and after pictures, you understand why I was high. Because I was unhealthy. I had five boys. I was horrible health, right? However, it's perfect now because I did the work, okay? Genetics is not an excuse. It's not. It's not an excuse and it's not. It shouldn't be something that they keep saying. It's not an excuse for five boys. It's not. It's not. I don't care what anybody says. It's not an excuse for five boys. It's not, okay? My hair stylist supports your idea and cut out my relaxer until, oh, okay, until I completely, I completed my healing journey. Okay, great. Okay, love to hear that. Yes, we can't be, relaxers are horrible, but I'm happy. Yes, and that's another thing I didn't talk about today, relaxers. Can five boys give you high blood pressure? Not directly, but, not directly, but when you have estrogen dominance, can, boom. The hormonal imbalance that causes fibroids, estrogen dominance, absolutely, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So they go, high blood pressure and fibroids, a lot of times for a lot of women, do go hand in hand due to the estrogen dominance can and also cause a lot of other issues. That's why I'm having a workshop next week. <laughs> I was told women just get them. That's not true. That's not true. Because mine is elevated for no reason and I'm fit. Estrogen dominance, Penny. Keyword, estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance. When you have, when you're estrogen dominant, there's so many conditions that you can, you're more excuse me, susceptible to when you're estrogen dominant. From autoimmune disorders to thyroid issues. That's why a lot of women that have fibroids have thyroid issues, issues with their thyroid hormones, gallbladder issues. How many women that have fibroids have taken out their gallbladder in the past? How many? So many, right? There's so many issues that can occur when you're estrogen dominant. That's why I'm doing the workshop, okay? So hope to see you guys there next week. Um, I'm going to keep talking about it because I, women have to understand estrogen dominance and how dangerous it is and they have to understand how to correct it. That's why I'm doing this workshop. Especially when that girl, excuse me, when that woman, excuse me, um, passed away last month, okay? That, listen, I think that woke a lot of women up and that woke me up to say, even though I was talking about it before, I was like, no, I got to push this even more. Cause when I talk, when I come here and do and do um, and do um, I talk about estrogen dominance. People blind their ears. They don't want to hear it because unless it's five boys, because they think they don't have it. They don't understand that five boys. And if you if you have five boys, you got estrogen dominance. And they've been lied to by their doctor that your hormones are fine. A lot of people doctors have lied to them. These tests lied to them. Your hormones are fine. Not not understanding that when you have five boys, when you have cysts, when you have PCOS, your hormones are out of balance. You would not have these conditions if your hormones were imbalanced, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I used to, I used, I'm used to wearing my hair straight. I, I, I completely understand. I was, I was addicted at one point, too. I forgot my hair is a lot. Okay, Tracy Ross. Oh, okay. What are your thoughts on slippery um, um, mugwort herbs? They're fine. They're fine, but do the work. You still got to do the work. <laughs> herbs are great. Still got to do the work, Letitia. Let, uh, Latasha. So hopefully I'm saying your name right. I cut out so much stuff too. Great job, Penny. Good job. Good job. Yeah, they didn't a, a circle check on her. They would have found her tumor. Yes, exactly. Okay, you're talking about, yes, the, okay, Jessica um, Petway. Yeah. They, I don't understand why they didn't do it. They dropped the ball. But it's, this, it's also too, here's, here's another side to it, right? A lot of us trust our doctor and we don't do thorough research. We don't do thorough, we don't, um, I'm not blaming her, of course not, because she she trusted her doctor like everybody else, right? That like we're told and trained to do, right? Like we're indoctrinated to do. But we as women, we hear these stories, especially black women, we hear these stories every day. And yet you still have black women saying that, my doctor said my hormones are fine. You still have black women who are showing symptoms, saying that and trusting tests over their own bodies in 2024 it blows my mind i'm like i just want to shake them like are you kidding me it blows my mind you're saying this as a black woman watching other black women who have died in the hands of doctors are you kidding me 
Are you okay? I, I don't understand. Okay, sorry, I went off for a little bit. Okay, I'm going to embrace my natural curl product. Yes, and if you want to strain your hair with a like a hot, I mean a what what they call it, a flat iron, that's fine. For now, thanks to you, Sasha. Yes, you can flat iron your hair. You can do other other styles as well, but just not the creamy crack. You gotta get rid of the creamy crack. It's an endocrine disruptor. Most minority women are deficient in vitamin D. Yes, which is a, which is a hormone. It acts. It's not a hormone. It acts like a hormone in the body. Make sure your levels are good. Exactly. Make sure your levels are good. Listen, whenever I see sun outside, I, I don't care what my to-do list is looking like. I have to go outside. I got to go outside. And how many times? Now, I want to say this. Well, we're just, we're just getting started in the week. But in the last week, how many times have you gone outside and got natural vitamin D? I'm not talking about these fake supplements that you guys are taking. That not doing nothing. That you're not even absorbing. I'm talking about real vitamin D from the sun. How many times in the last seven days have you gone outside to get it? I'll wait. You can put the number in the chat. How many days have you gone outside to get sun for even just 15 minutes? Zero. Thanks for being honest. Every day. Good job, Penny. Good job. Good job, Penny. I love it. I went this weekend. I don't care. My to-do list look crazy. I said I have to go out. I took... A jog today in the sun and I oh got my life. I felt amazing. I walk every day. Good. I agree. Listen to your body. Absolutely. Always our body will tell us before a doctor. Absolutely. And you know when it comes to things like PCOS, right, that supposedly they're supposed to find by test. Women go decades without being diagnosed. Not understanding. They're supposed to look at their symptoms. Not a stupid test that a doctor gives them. That's not even accurate. They're supposed to look at their body's symptoms to tell them really whether they have PCOS. 50% of black women have PCOS. Most don't even know it because of their weight on tests. Uh, don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me started. How do I know um, how I have this? What do you mean, little bear? I'm not understanding what you, what you mean. Um, every day when it's out he here, I'm in Texas. Okay, yes, Texas, you have no excuse. That's if anybody listening in the South has no excuse. You, no excuse. You should not be vitamin D deficient if you live in the South. Texas, Florida, California, Arizona, New Mexico. Okay, you should not be vitamin D deficient. My friend has PCOS. Most people have, I mean, a lot of women have PCOS. They don't even, most don't even know it. Most do, they don't even know it, okay? Um, that's true, it's hot in Texas. Yes, absolutely, yes. Y'all have, that, that, and their weather, I mean, you know, even in the like spring, the spring, the uh, fall, it's still hot over there. Do you think dairy's bad for fibroids? Absolutely, that was, What's, that should have been number one on my list. It's horrible. That's like the, one of the top things that will literally grow your fibroids. Dairy is horrible. Not even bad. Horrible for fibroids. It will grow your fibroid bigger than a watermelon. Or is it grass? No, no, no grass fed. Not grass fed. Not, I don't care what crap they're telling you. Let it go. 100%. They ain't no grass fed this, that. It's, no, let it go. It's still filled with mucus. I don't care if it's grass fed or not. Okay? Let it, you got to let it go. They give us all these lies, organic, grass-fed. No, let it go. It don't matter. It still creates tumors in the body. It still inflames the body, whether it's fed with grass or not. Okay? If you aren't anemic, can hair shed from fibroids? Yes, absolutely. Estrogen dominance, Penny. Estrogen dominance. That's why I'm having the workshop next week. Estrogen dominance. When you are estrogen dominant, you're going to get all these symptoms. Until you resolve the issue. Estrogen dominance is the key. I'm going to keep saying it. Are you coming to the master class tomorrow, next week? Estrogen, estro dominance, two-day workshop, hormonal balance. Two-day hormonal balance workshop next week. Thir two, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Zoom. If, you, if you're there, if you sign up, you get replays, whether you're there or not. Okay? So even women that can't make it, you have to work. You get the replays, okay? It's gonna be an amazing workshop for women that have estrogen. If you have fibroids, you need to be there. Heavy bleeding, you need to be there. Um, you've had ectopic pregnancies, blocked tubes. I have a long list. If you go to the link, the link in my bio to sign up is for only $44, but after Friday, it's gonna go up. If you go to the link in my bio, you'll see the long list that I have there. If you have these, you need to be there. Hair shedding is actually one of them, okay? I need to put my work down and break for some time. Yeah, absolutely. I had to, before when I used to work for corporate, I had to do that too. Listen, I'm on break. Boom. Even if it's just 15 minutes. And that would also too help my stress levels because I hated my job at the time. That would help with stress significantly. 
kill two birds with one stone. Get some sun, okay? And, you know, lower the stress levels. <laughs> I hate taking medications from the doctor. Yeah. They are um, doing all these tests because they don't know. What don't they know? So what are they trying to find out? Are you exhibiting any symptoms? Sasha, what bad food? Hold on. What? Um, what bad food used to be your favorite? If I'm oh, woo! Let me go down the list. I was a terrible eater for years. I'm almost embarrassed to say the type of food that I used to eat. But let's go down the list. I was never big on. I used to eat a lot of chicken, but I was never really big on chicken. Red meat was my thing. So I was like, I used to eat a lot of steak. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Philly cheesesteaks, okay, all this, like I was a red meat eater. I'm talking about red meat nearly every day. Anemic as I don't know what, because people say, oh, you eat, you know, when you eat red meat, that's a couple of iron levels, that's a lie, it's a lie. So I ate a lot of fast food, okay, all the time, okay. A lot of rice, white rice, all the foods that y'all love, I love too, that's why I had, I'm like, no, there's no excuse. All the foods that you guys love, so eggs, that crap, right? Chickens, period. <laughs> I used to eat that almost every day for breakfast. Scrambled eggs, right? The chickens, period. That's estrogenic and giving, again, feeding those fibers, feeding the pathogens in your body. So, all the crap. Um, I was, I love fast food. I used to, I'm so embarrassed to say this, but I actually used to eat McDonald's a lot. <laughs> sort of vomit when I think about it. McDonald's was my favorite, like one of my favorites back in the day. I want to vomit when I think about that. But that was one of my favorite foods. So, I bad foods. Everything bad. French fries. Everything bad. I liked. All the bad foods. I was never big on pork. Now, I can say that. I did love bacon. But other than that, I wasn't really big on pork. I didn't really grow up eating pork. But red meat? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I remember I remember way before this. The way, It was like 15 years ago. I went to Jamaica a long time, long time ago. I recently went, but lost on little, like the first time I went to Jamaica. Um, it's so embarrassing. But I went, I, oxtails was my thing. Like I loved oxtails. Don't eat that crap anymore. Don't eat meat. Y'all know I don't eat no animal products anymore. As a matter of fact, now I'm even raw. Okay, so, and I went raw vegan like a month and a half ago. That was, now that was hard. That took me back to when I first became, you know, started my journey. It took me back mentally there. I'm like, this ain't easy. Okay, but I'm, we're, we're well on like day 46 now. Yeah, 46. It's now so much easier because the first week I was about to cry. Like, <laughs> I want some cooked food. What the hell is this? Now I'm on day 46. I'm like, it's nothing now. So it just takes time for you to get used to it. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. What about in moderation? No, not when we have five boys. Listen, if we're serious about healing five boys, ain't no moderation. We gotta go all in or, or nothing. Ain't no tiptoeing. Either we wanna heal or not. It's, it's, it's... People always say in moderation and they, they, they still, we always say this in moderation thing, right? Americans always say it's an American thing, in moderation. We'll just eat it in moderation. That's why everybody is overweight and sick because of moderation. Or we claim moderation. There's still an attachment there, meaning that you're still gonna do it more than you should. Ain't no such thing as in. I'm, I'm a, maybe it's because I'm a Scorpio. I'm black or white. You're in or you out. You're in or you're out. Period. No dairy at all. So no, like you could do, uh, what the heck? You can make your own like uh, sorbet, right? To kind of get that, that feel, right? Do the sorbet. That's, that's much better than the, um, so no fro dairy, no frozen yogurt. Yeah, made from, you could do frozen, yeah. Frozen yogurt made from coconut milk. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, exactly. If you want that ice cream feel, don't do too much of it now because it still has sugar. But if you want that ice cream feel, do that instead. Do you recommend drinking alkaline water for, or spring water for women with fibroids? I prefer, me, spring water. Natural spring water. That, I've been doing that for years. Maybe it's because I used to follow Dr. Savy. I've been doing that for years. Natural spring water. Alkaline water to me, you know, and it's super expensive for no reason. But anyway, I would uh, stick to, um, me, for me, is, now, Distilled water is also good. Some people feel differently. They want to do the alkaline water. It's fine. But for if you ask me personally, I would say distilled or spring water. But I do natural spring water. Okay, that's a good question. Does estrogen dominance have to do with liver too? Absolutely. That's a great question. Yes, it does. Estrogen, because here's the thing. Our liver is responsible for metabolizing these excess hormones, right? The liver is, again, it, it can't. So you know when you're estrogen dominant, when you have fibroids, when you have all these other issues, that liver is sluggish. 
it's not able to metabolize the hormones like it's supposed to. So we have to support the liver. So that's why you guys got to be at the master class next week. We got to talk about it. Because your organs are also suffering. Your digestive system is suffering. The liver, like, and then we're eating things to worsen the problem. And we're drinking these to worsen the problem, like caffeine and alcohol. They're horrible for people with fibroids and for liver issues. Um, all you can spring water. Yeah, me too. I love spring, spring water too. Me saying here, I've been drinking that for years. I stick to what I know. I'm on day one and I messed up with that egg in my salad. <laughs> I thought I was doing something. It's okay, Pebbles. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. We got tomorrow. So do we just know going forward tomorrow, no more eggs in the salad. Um, <laughs> um, I guess I eat my bowl of fruit. Every, I love it. My bowl of fruit every morning. I love it. I love it. You're welcome. No problem. That's my problem. French fries. Listen, I'm not going to lie. French fries had me in a chokehold for a very long time. I'm not going to lie. I'm fake on here. French fries had me in a chokehold for, for a time. <laughs> okay? I'm not going to lie. But replace it like so do um um sweet potato fries like you know do or make them yourself make sweet potato and put them in the air fryer you know do that now i can't even do that because i'm raw now but you do that like make other alternatives okay so so glad i stopped a heavy breakfast yeah it just it and if it drains you physically the whole day first thing i eat is fruit i love that i love that that heavy breakfast is so toxic to the body it's horrible for the for the um for the gut Okay, but that's all, ladies. I'm, I don't want to be on here too long. I've been on here over an hour. I tried coconut water, and I got to get used to the taste. <laughs> I mixed it with spring water. Just do spring water then. Just do. You don't need the coconut water. Have a good night, Penny. Have a good night. Thank you for being here. I drink a lot of coconut water. Okay, good. My stomach has gone down since February. Oh, I love that. My stomach is not as hard. I love that. Yes, Ursula. Yes. Oof. Yes, exactly. I love that. I take Florex for my low iron thoughts. Uh, is that, I think I heard, is that herbal? Because people keep asking about that one. Um, is that herbal? Yes, French fries used to be my weakness. Yeah, French, listen, French fries are me in a choke hold. I will be transparent. I had friendly <laughs> Wendy's fries last week. Oh, God. Now try the sweet potato trick I, I told you about, okay, with the air fryer, okay? What about egg vegan? Oh, just egg. Um, it is vegan, but at the same time, it still has a lot of crap in it. Uh oh. Okay. Sorry, always makes me verify when I, I'm over I'm on here over an hour. I gotta go soon. But just egg has a lot of processed stuff. Now they have another egg alternative that one of my clients told me about that actually has really good ingredients that's that's not really eggs. I just don't know the name. I gotta see what thank you, Lisa. Thank you. I had to see where she got it from. Ask her. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. So I say all this to say next week I'm having a workshop, a two-day workshop, extra dominance, okay? Two-day hormonal balance workshop. You need to be there. The reason why is because we're going to go over how to correct estrogen dominance, a hormonal imbalance that a lot of women have that's responsible for fibroids, heavy bleeding, that's responsible for endometriosis, you know, even a lot of miscarriages, trigger warning, a lot of, um, you know, infertility, that's responsible for autoimmune disorders, even allergies, okay? Men with prostate issues is responsible for a lot of health issues, okay? So we're going to talk about it. Your hormones has to be in balance in order to be healthy. It's a, I mean, we cannot have hormones out of balance. So next week, it's only $44. So I want you guys to click the link in my bio, sign up for this masterclass. It's only $44. It's gonna, the price will go up in a couple days, okay? After Friday, it's going up, okay? So, um, what was I going to say? So it's going to be a two day workshop on zoom. If you're registered, you're going to get the replays. Okay. So if you're not able to make it or you have to miss day one or day two, don't, don't worry. You're going to get the replays if you sign up. Okay. Very important. So be at this masterclass. It's going to be a, a lot of amazing information. You guys, if you've been to my masterclass, you know that you're always, I mean, it's always extremely, 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 extremely valuable, right? Just eggs. No, Ebony. Too much, too much processed ingredients in there. I'm in um, um, Washington, D.C. Okay. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Okay. Yeah, just eggs. No, you don't want to do just eggs. Too much processed. Um, the greens are not good, unfortunately. Okay. Um, there's another brand that my client was telling me about. But I think it's like a boiled egg, but it's not really an egg. Okay, I gotta see where she got that from. But message me, Ebony, so to remind me to look to see, to ask her where she got it from. 
if you're interested in getting it. But yes, okay, so that's that's all, ladies. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Click the link in my bio, join the masterclass. Also, get on the email list um, so you'll know when I'm going live, you know when I'm doing these lives, if you enjoy them and you get a lot of information out of them. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk about what makes Fibroids grow part two, okay? Until the part one today, today's part, we, have, we still have a lot to go over tomorrow, okay? And I'll also be doing questions tomorrow, okay? But that's all. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for the likes. Oh my God, we almost got to 10, 10K. Thank you, ladies, okay? Have a good night, Ursula. Bye, everybody. Have a lovely night. Happy Monday. See you guys later. Bye.